Imagine an aircraft so advanced that it was called the Titanic of the skies vanishes over the Atlantic without a trace. Tonight, the story of Flight 447. It has been called the Titanic of air disasters. This isn't a movie. It is what happened to Air France Flight 447. How did a routine flight turn into one of the most baffling aviation mysteries of the 21st century? Let's uncover the events of this fateful journey. It was June 1st, 2009. The sunset sun poured warm hues over the tarmac of Rio de Janeiro's International Airport as Air France's Flight 447 prepared for its flight to Paris. The excitement of travelers settling into their seats and getting ready for the transatlantic journey ahead filled the air. The seasoned crew, consisting of Captain Mark Dubios, First Officer David Robert, and Junior First Officer Pierre Cedric Bonin were engaged in pre-flight procedures aboard the aircraft, unaware of the unexpected tragedy that awaited them. The Airbus taxied down the runway, its engines humming a familiar tune as it took off on what appeared to be a typical journey. The cockpit, which was lit softly, oozed professionalism as the pilots watched instruments and systems. Passengers in the cabin were accustomed to the engine's buzz, unaware that the journey over the massive Atlantic Ocean would take an unexpected turn. As the plane approached cruising altitude, it came upon a line of strong thunderstorms in the vast expanse of the Atlantic. The seasoned crew, who were well-versed in navigating through stormy weather, plotted a course around the looming clouds. Unbeknownst to them, the storm had a hidden threat that would test their abilities as well as the boundaries of the Airbus A330. Ice crystals began forming on the PIDOT tubes, which are important sensors for detecting airspeed within the turbulent clouds. These seemingly innocuous ice crystals would set in motion a chain reaction that would quickly lead to catastrophe. The autopilot disengaged as the ice accumulation skewed airspeed measurements. Confusion swept through the crew inside the dimly lit cockpit as contradicting warnings and alarms echoed. The warning sounded periodically, which indicates a dangerous lack of lift. However, the pilots faced the tough challenge of contradicting information, indicating the need for a steep rise. They misread the situation and directed the airplane to ascend fast, pushing it to its aerodynamic limitations. Flight 447 experienced a stall as it rose deeper into the storm a dangerous position where the wings lost lift because of a lack of airflow. The aircraft began a rapid descent despite the pilot's desperate attempts to restore control. The storm, which had begun as a minor hazard, had turned into the perfect storm of blunders that propelled the plane into an irreversible disaster. The cockpit had devolved into a chaotic battleground of alarms and disorder in the dead of night. The pilots struggled to figure out the complexities of the situation as they wrestled with the controls. The airplane was surrounded by darkness outside the cockpit window, and the sea of alarms inside provided little clarity in the thick of the storm. The pilots battled with the brutal truth of their situation as Flight 447 fell at an alarming rate. The ocean below grew closer by the second, and the crew's desperate attempts to restore control were hopeless. The violent descent shocked passengers in the cabin, who were oblivious to the approaching disaster, and the cabin staff confronted the difficult challenge of preserving order amid the commotion. At first, nobody knew outside the plane what happened to the aircraft. Aviation experts were baffled at what happened to the most technologically advanced airplane at the time. But the unthinkable happened. Air France made the announcement within hours after the takeoff. They lost an aircraft with 228 people on board. They had lost the aircraft with all the people on board. The collision with the Atlantic Ocean was disastrous. Flight 447 collided with the water's surface with great force. The impact smashed the plane, dispersing wreckage across the vast stretches of the ocean. The once exciting journey from Rio de Janeiro to Paris had ended tragically, killing all 228 persons on board. In the aftermath, the wreckage was sunk to a depth of around 13,000 feet in the ocean depths. 
The accident site's isolated location and the enormous challenges faced due to the ocean's depth hindered search and recovery efforts. Families of the victims clung to hope as days went into weeks, awaiting news that seemed increasingly unlikely to bring comfort. But how did a sophisticated aircraft outfitted with cutting-edge equipment and piloted by an experienced crew meet such a sad end? Investigators went on to investigate the mystery of Air France Flight 447, while recovery teams faced the challenging job of recovering debris and human remains from the ocean below. The underwater search tried to recover the black box which held the key to comprehending the final minutes of the tragic flight. The recovery mission was riddled with difficulties. The area was huge and in the middle of nowhere, almost 17,000 kilometers square. There was no radar coverage. All of this made the search operation very difficult. After the tragic incident, the search and recovery operation became an enormous undertaking. A plane had crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, leaving a trail of wreckage on the ocean floor at a depth of approximately 13,000 feet. The recovery teams consisted of members from various countries, such as Brazil, France, and the United States. The teams thoroughly searched through the ocean floor, employing cutting-edge sonar gear, underwater vehicles, and remotely operated submarines for any signs of the wreckage. The search region covered a vast expanse of the Atlantic, making the effort look like looking for a needle in a haystack. The teams faced numerous challenges due to the powerful underwater currents, extreme pressure at great depths, and the unpredictable nature of the ocean. The rehabilitation required a systematic and careful approach. The search for the black box of Air France Flight 447 was difficult work that spanned almost two years. The crash site, located 1,000 miles off Brazil's northeastern coast, poses significant challenges due to its remote and deep-sea location. The search was hampered by technological limitations, which included simpler remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, and autonomous underwater vehicles, or AUVs. Despite the challenges faced, the global effort continued, and in April 2011, a team aboard the French vessel, Alusia, successfully identified and retrieved the black boxes from the ocean floor. The recovery was a significant turning point in the investigation, providing crucial information to understand the sequence of events that led to the devastating crash. When the black boxes were found, the attention shifted toward the biggest reason for the plane crash, the pilots. Air France Flight 447's 30,000-foot plunge was a preventable disaster. The Airbus A330 flew into a storm at night, and its speed sensors malfunctioned, which caused the autopilot to shut off. The captain was on break in the main cabin, and cockpit transcripts show the co-pilots became overwhelmed. The junior one was actually flying the plane. The other co-pilot asked, What's happening? I don't know. I don't know what's happening, the junior one replied. The junior pilot had made a fatal mistake by twice pulling up on the plane's nose, causing it to fly so slowly it was about to stall. They both ignored stall warnings that sounded 75 times in the cockpit. The more junior co-pilot said, I don't have control of the airplane anymore. Now, a minute and a half after the autopilot disengaged, the captain finally returned to the cockpit, but never took control of the plane. What are you doing? He asked. It was too late. Three and a half minutes after the cockpit crisis began, the aircraft slammed belly first into the ocean. The Airbus A330 was often regarded as the Titanic of the sky. The Titanic of the skies sank because of human error. The families of the deceased also registered a lawsuit accusing Air France and Airbus of involuntary manslaughter. The court, however, acquitted both Air France and Airbus from this case. The families of victims of France's worst air disaster said they were devastated after a Paris court cleared Air France and Airbus of manslaughter charges over the 2009 crash that caused the deaths of 228 people. Giving its verdict on Monday, the court said that if faults had been committed, no certain casual link with the accident had been demonstrated. David Cobby, a lawyer for the families of several passengers, said the court's ruling was incomprehensible. 
It is a signal that you can kill 228 people in an air crash and nobody is at fault. The families that I represent are devastated and this has prevented them from mourning their loved ones, Kobe said after the hearing. Kobe said that while the two companies had been cleared of any criminal wrongdoing, the court had found in the family's favor in a separate civil case, declaring Air France and Airbus jointly responsible for fault and opening the way to damages for the victims' families. The court has decided that while no blame can be appropriated to criminal law, under civil law, Air France and Airbus committed four faults and are responsible for damages, Kobe said. The airline tells pilots nowadays, you cannot possibly fly this airplane as accurately as the automatics can, so don't even try. Mm. Now, if you've been training your pilots, never take over. If they've never been getting any practice, if they don't have any faith in their ability to fly, bef uh, fly anymore, what have you got? You've got a passenger. So who is the real culprit of this tragedy? The pilots, Air France, Airbus, or the whole industry? Be sure to tell us in the comments section below.